Hello everybody and welcome to Dakman Productions and welcome to Conahay Real. And today I'm going to bring you the video that I've been promising you for the last three or four weeks. A Conrail cold drag. Now this cold drag is going to mimic the one that was like end of 90's time period. Um, so Conrail had used the um, SD80 Mac locomotives. Uh, that was the sole purpose of them purchasing the uh, EMD SD80 Mac locomotives was for their uh, cold drags. And we're going to talk more about that at the end of the video. Because uh, I know people were complaining that they want to see more trains running and less talking. So for this video, I'll leave the explanations and I'm going to go through some Conrail rules. And also, this run is unprototypical, but this is a, a fun run, and I'll explain why this particular run is not prototypical to a camera would have done. Uh, so, also, would like to thank the ex conrail or retired conrail workers who are, are now watching and subscribe to my channel. I have four retired Conroe uh, locomotive engineers who are watching my video. Thank you very much. I also picked up a person who is retired from the Conroe Police Department, and that was kind of exciting to uh, see him join. And thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's great to have all of you on board. I hope to have more. Uh, and attract more uh, retired Conroe workers to this channel. I'm a big, huge Conroe fan. Um, and the biggest reason for that is, if I'll make it quick, is because uh, back when I was a kid, uh, I used to go to this one uh, mainline track that Conroe would stop at. The engineer would stop at the signal. He would go to the store get back into the locomotive and wait for the signal to turn and then he would go and after you know riding my bike to this location uh, many many times he offered me a one mile ride and I never forgot <laughs> it was it was so great okay so my layout is 35 foot long most people as I mentioned before they just see this part of it where I sit in front of the one part of the layout here we have uh, two locomotives. These are the SD80 Max. And so there is the cold drag. It wraps around over there, over here, over to here. Um, right now I have an SD80 Max as a mid helper. Once I bring the train around, I'm going to add an SD45 to that. So there will be two Conrail mid helper uh, DPU locomotives. And I'll explain what DPU means at the end of the video. And then it wraps around here and it goes through that tunnel. So, for those who don't know, there is a wall in another room where this train travels through. I've shown this multiple times on video. So the train comes back through and comes along and it keeps going and going and going and going and into another room, which is where my shop is at. Now, I never usually show my shop on video because you can see why. It's a total wreck, total mess. So, I'll be about the video because I do work back here. Um, and then it finally ends. So, the end of this layout to the front is 35 foot long. So, I'm going to say I have 36 foot of train, including the locomotives and the one I had to put on here yet. But, yeah, as you can see, there's three... Uh, locomotives that are going to be pushers from behind. I know people are going to ask, Dakman, is this the longest train you ever run on your layout? Yes, this is the longest train I ever run. Also, the most locomotives I ever put on my layout.
I uh, didn't run all my coal hoppers. I still have uh, eight coke hoppers and an add-on. So I have both MTH coke hopper four car sets and one add-on. I'm still missing an add-on to make that ten. I was a little nervous about how long it was already without adding another nine onto that train. Uh, I'm hoping that one day that, um, you know, I'll be able to run a unit train of coke hoppers, maybe like 20, and then a unit train of the rotary gondolas or the coal porters, and then a unit train of the coal hoppers. And um, so I just need to collect enough to make a unit train of each one of them. And, you know, I don't need to stick with Conrail. I can, I don't think they made much in Penn Central on these, but, you know, if I could find stuff in Reading, I could add that, and that would be correct for the Conrail period. And other road names as well that Conrail took over. All right, first things first. DPU, what does DPU mean in railroading terms? It means distributed power units. That means you put locomotives somewhere else in the train other than in the front. Perhaps you put... A locomotive in the middle or perhaps you put it on the end and why would railroads do this well there's a couple of different reasons uh, it could be for the on where they're going if they're going in the, into the mountains they may need extra dynamic braking uh, so they'll throw look extra locomotives not because the ones out front can't pull it but because of uh, dynamic braking and I know you're thinking well why would you need a locomotive in the middle or the end just for dynamic braking? Depends on how long that train is. So, if the train is so long, you have all that tension on couplers. So, as you're braking and then you know, and then you go ahead and give it throttle, you're putting all, a lot of strain on those couplers. Those couplers do break, by the way, and they get flung up in the air. I mean, if uh, for those who rail fan, that's why they say to stay back because couplers, those couplers do break, and if one hits you, you're dead. Um, so the the locomotives are not only placed there for dynamic braking; they're also placed there to keep a certain amount of tension, or less tension, you know, equal amount of tension on couplers as possible. Also, they may put one in there for. Um, extra air so you can only supply air for so long of a train so if you got a 200 car train you're not going to supply air from the lead units all the way back to that train it's not possible so they'll slide one in the back or in the middle to uh just for uh for air for the air pressure part of it to supply air to the rest of the train and speaking of dpu i would not recommend this to somebody who's just starting out but if you're planning on using powered units as a DPU train, I suggest you start off small, 20 cars, because just like I said, in real railroading, you have a ton of coupler slack. So if you have your rear locomotives pushed up too far against it, you could push the trains off in the corner. If you, if you have your locomotive slack, locomotives in a way that the slack is too tight, you're going to streamline and pull them off in the corner. So you got to have an even amount of tension uh, between the couplers, just like a real train, or else you're going to not have a fun run. Also, this kind of a train is not something that you're going to be able to put on a layout and run all day. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to run maybe like four or five laps and then recheck, stop the train and recheck your coupler slack. Because even though I'm running legacy locomotives, which are, you know, have very minute settings, they run perfect together and a lash up, they could still be off just a little tiny bit from each other. So if, so if the rear locomotives are off just a little tiny bit in about four or five laps, it's going to be up against the train and not enough slack's going to be in there or it's going to have... Uh, too far back and it's going to put, be putting a lot of tension on there. And it usually takes about five or six laps for that to show up. And and all this is by experience, by the way. I learned all this by experience. 
So yeah, I'll do like five or six laps. I'll stop the train and reset my coupler uh, lash up with the rear locomotives. Now the, the locomotives in the middle of the train are not powered, so I don't have to worry about them. I just got to worry about the ones on the rear. So those are your two tips if you're looking to run a DPU. I suggest you know you start off small, 20 or 30 cars, and then put one up front and one in the back just to get used to the coupler slack and all that stuff and see what you have to do. It's it's not an easy run. I mean, it would be probably be better off if you would put you know, three or four locomotives up front and then run of non-powered units, but then you end up having the same problem as the real railroads. You know, you got all that coupler tension and you'll be breaking your plastic couplers too. So, in this case, uh, believe it or not, I actually needed the DPU. I needed to have, you know, there was a lot of stress uh, when you're running that kind of a train uh, on these cars. So I actually needed to have the units in the back to take up some of that slack so not a lot of tensions on the coupler, especially on the, on the locomotives up front. Alright, so I mentioned that this is not a prototypical run, this is a fun run. So if you took a look at the train running by, you'll notice that there's three or four different types of hopper cars uh, in this train, which would have really never have happened. So there's a couple different names, uh, coal porters, uh, rotary gondolas, those cars are meant to go through a facility that has a coal rotating rotary coal dump in it. So the, the cars will come through and then, you know, they would get rotated upside down, they dump the coal. You wouldn't be bringing a uh, open bottom hopper car into a facility like that. So you'll notice that the DPU uh, I split the train where the DPU is. So the rotary coal gondolas or the coal porters actually stop at the DPU. After the DPU are regular coal hoppers with hatches that open on the bottom of them. And a shout out to Harold Fox. He said the next time that you run that coal drag, could you run the card that I gave you? So on the back end, of that train uh, was the Virginian and Ohio two bay coal hopper and Harold had actually given that to me for my birthday at Hanning's train shop and he actually put the year that I was born on it as the road number and I had, thank you very much Harold for that gift again and here you go shout out to you uh, run that in, uh, in this episode of a coal drive. Let's go with uh, some a couple of Conrail rules, and I hope the Conrail engineers stuck around so they can comment and add their input, or if I'm incorrect, or just uh, fine-tune me a little bit here, because research is kind of hard, and they would know better than me, since they actually worked for Conrail. Uh, so, Conrail was the only railroad to get the SD80 Max brand new. No other railroad had ordered them. And so when the Conroe was split between Norfolk Southern and CSX, yes, of course, they ended up with them. Unfortunately, uh, they're all gone now. Uh, I was hoping at least one would be saved. I think I read a story where they're trying to save one somewhere. But it would be cool. And the SD, the EMD SD80 Mac was distributed to different locations in two locomotive sets. The engineers ended up nicknaming these locomotives as Cadillacs because they rode like a Cadillac. They were smooth, they were comfortable ride, they were a very comfortable locomotive. Now the reason why they were assigned in two locomotive sets is because Conroe, one of the Conroe rules, generally speaking, they did not want you to lash up more than two SD80 Max at a shot. If you needed more motive power, you had to put uh, a different type of locomotive. You could not put a third or a fourth SD80 Max in line with it. 
And why is that? And it was due to the Conroe rules that the axle weight on that particular locomotive would be too much on to the tracks. So basically that's the reason why you cannot MU a third and a fourth SD80 Mac due to the axle weight on the track. The second Conroe rule to uh, basically adding power to the SD80 Mac two locomotive set was that you had it had to be another AC traction locomotive. You could not they did not want you lashing up a DC locomotive like um, like you see there in, the, in my DPU I had an SD80 Mac and an SD45 that would have never been allowed on Conrail. Uh, they did not want a DC traction motor and an AC traction motor MU'd together like that. And yes, uh, railroads use terms MU. That's why you hear me talking that way. In the world of Lionel, they call putting two power locomotives a lash up or a train. That's not the proper language for real railroading. They call it MU or multiple units. So that's why you keep hearing me say the term MU. That's the true term of putting two locomotives together. So the reason why Conroe did not want an AC traction motor locomotive and a DC traction motor locomotive MU together was because uh, they were afraid that it would burn out the AC traction motors on the one locomotive. I think they actually had that happen uh, in slower operations, so they just made a rule all together. Like, if you wanted to add power to the SD80 Max, you would either pick out an SD70 Mac or SD60M. So, the inspiration behind this run was somebody had sent me a video, and that video actually had four locomotive units pushing from behind. It was just so great to see that, and I was like, wow. I know people are going to ask what was on the what locomotives were you using on the train. So in the lead uh, were SD80 Mac Cadillacs, as I mentioned, the mid DPU units. Uh, the first one was a Conroe SD45. Behind that is another SD80 Mac. At the end, you have an SD40, SD40-2, and an SD38. All EMD power, and I love EMD power. So it's a shame that railroads have gotten away from EMD power or getting away from it. They're selling an awful lot and sticking with GE. Uh, is all I got to say. But hey, to each their own. I mean, I understand EMD is not EMD anymore. It's the soul of the Progress Rail. I mean, it's a shame what happened to that company because EMD at one time was the number one dependable, reliable, cost-effective locomotive ever. And there was uh, one locomotive that actually hurt that reputation to no return, but we'll talk about that in another video. So if you're a Conroe fan, you'll notice. So I wore my Conroe quality today since this is a pretty much a uh, 90s run and if you're a Conroe fan or a retired Conroe worker thank you for watching and if you're a regular viewer who stuck around for this much of it thanks a lot and we'll catch you guys trackside and remember Conroe big blue forever see you later everybody goodbye